Good afternoon. This is Cecilia with Kentucky Rose Devotionals, where we're finding the roses in the Word of God. Um, maybe if you're like me today, you've had a long day and you're thinking, you know, what would God have me to do um, in this situation that I'm in right now? I've heard from a lot of different people today going through difficulties, going through hardships, going through things they don't understand or they can't explain. And you know what? As I think about this year and I think about 2023, what keeps coming to my mind, and there's probably others that have had this come to their mind too, so I'm sure I'm not the first one to think of it. But when I think of 23, I think of the 23rd Psalm. I think of, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. <laughs> you know, no matter what we are facing, no matter what is coming against us, what is coming at us in this world, at this particular season that we're in, the Lord is my shepherd. He is going to lead me. He is going to guide me. He's going to guide me around the things that the enemy has designed for my destruction or my family's destruction. He is the shepherd. He is going to defend us. He's going to protect us. He's going to keep us. If we will just hold on to him. You know, the sheep, if, if one of them runs off, they've ran out of the safety of the shepherd. They've ran away from the flock. But if we stay close to the shepherd today, if we draw near to him, if we stay with the sheep, if we stay with the those who belong to the Lord, and we agree with them, and we pray with them, and we seek the face of God um, each and every day for ourselves, for our families, for our community, for our nation. If we're doing those things and we're depending on the Lord and not depending on our own efforts because our own efforts, I have found, they fail. They do not work. The things that I want don't always come to pass. The things that I think I need don't always even come to pass. But God is my shepherd. He will lead me. He will guide me. He will protect me. And yes, a good shepherd is a provider. He provides. Where He guides us, He provides for us. So today, whatever you're worrying about, cast it to the one who can do something about it. Talk to the one who can do something about it. Run to that secret place today. Run to that prayer closet. Run to that place that you and God can be alone. And you can just pour out your heart before him today and say, God, I've come to the end of my resources. And he'll be at the other end saying, good, I'm glad. I'm glad you finally realized that I'm the only resource that you need, that I'm here that I'm available, that if you will just come to me and, and pour out your heart before me, that things will change. This is temporary. We keep talking about the temporary and the eternal. Keep holding on to the Father today. Keep holding on to God. As we go back to um, what we've been reading, we've been in the book of First John. So I hope you'll go there with me today in your Bible. If you've got your Bible handy, if you don't, you can read this um, when you are, when you can. But we're going to look at chapter three today and just remind ourselves of what kind of love our Shepherd, our Lord, has for us today, and just to be comforted in that, to know that we are secure, we are safe, we are established in that relationship that we have in the Lord today. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed on us, that he should call us the sons or daughters of God. We are his children. We belong to him. We're not a slave. We're a son or a daughter to God. So if we're his sons and daughters, he's going to only give us good things. He's only going to give us his best things, isn't he? If it's come from the Father, it's going to be good things. He gives good things to his children. We don't have to want. And that's what Psalm 23, keep going back to that. But that's what it says. I shall not want. Why, why do I not want? Because everything I need is found in Jesus Christ. Everything that I need. So going back, he says, We should be called the sons of God, therefore the world knoweth us not. We're not going to be known by this world. No one in this world may, have, may never even know my name. But God knows my name. God knows your name today. It doesn't matter if the world knows us or not. You know, when we're in the world and we're trying to do the things of God, we're going to be put down for that. We're going to be persecuted. We're going to go through tribulations. We're going to go through suffering. You know, that is part of, of being a Christian, living for Christ and making sacrifices and, and going through the things that we go through, the things that we may avoid because of our relationship with Christ, because we want to stay pure and holy to Him. People aren't going to like you for that. They're going to avoid you. 
They're not going to want to be around you because you represent Jesus to them. And it's not that they're necessarily rejecting you, but they're rejecting the Jesus in you, that they don't want to be around it. They don't want to be reminded that that's what they truly need and they're hungry for. So he's, he's telling us that. Don't be troubled if, if people in this world don't like you. Don't be troubled if the world doesn't even know your name. God knows your name. You're his son. You're his daughter. Verse 2, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. Don't get worried. If looking in the mirror you say, Ooh, I don't like what I'm seeing, because you're not what you're going to be. If you're walking with Jesus Christ, one day we're going to have a new glorified body. And we're going to be something totally new that we, we can't even imagine what how wonderful we're going to look when we get to heaven. He says, but yet, well, hasn't appeared yet. But we will know when, we, when he shall appear, when Jesus shall appear, we shall be like him. And we shall see him as he is. With our human eyes right now, we can't see Jesus in all his glory, in all his wonder, all his power. Because... It would just, it would blow our mind. We, we with our human mind can't handle it. But one day, when we stand before the Father, and we will see Him just as He is, and we will see ourselves just as we are in the most beautiful, glorified body that God designed just for you and me. Praise the Lord for that. Number three, and every man that hath this hope in Him purify Himself, even as He is pure. We have this hope. We have the hope today. We don't place our hope in the situations in this world. We don't even base our relationship with God on the things that are happening to us in this world. That's where we get hung up sometimes is we, we look at the situations. We look at the things that are happening in our lives and we say, God, how can you love me? Why are you letting me go through this? But yet again, we, we have to point ourselves back to our relationship. Why are we in relationship with God? Just to get things from Him? That's the wrong reason, isn't it? But we should be in relationship and in love with God for Him giving His only Son for us, dying for us. That's enough. That was enough. That's all He had to do to die for our sins and secure eternity for us. He's done all He needs to do, hasn't He? So that's what uh, John is reminding us here. To keep our hearts pure before the Lord. To remember that we belong to God. To remember that we're His beloved, that we love Him and He loves us. He says, Whosoever committeth sins transgresses against the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested. Take away our sins, and in him there is no sins. Jesus died so that you could be free. He died that you could be free from sin, hell, death, and the grave. That's the reason he died. And he, he manifested himself to us. He came from heaven. He gave up all the riches of heaven just for you so that you could live. So that you can live in freedom. It says, Whoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither have you known him. So as we are dwelling in God's presence, as we grow closer to him, as we are more concerned about our relationship and being in love with him, then the situations that we go through, we say, This is not too hard for God. I know my God. I know what he can do. And if he doesn't deliver me out of it, he'll go through me with it. I've, I've been finding that true. Sometimes I pray prayers and I thank God. I just wish you would deliver me from this situation. But then I hear God in a small, still voice saying, I, I'm not going to deliver you out of it, but I'll walk through you with it. And, and so that's exactly what he's done. You know, in this time of grieving that I've been in over my dad, um, he has walked with me through every piece of grief that I've walked through, every, every hard day, every difficult day, every question that I've had. Why, God? He has been right there, faithfully holding me, comforting me, listening to my, my, my disappointments, listening to my fears. God's not afraid for you to tell him how you feel. He already knows anyway. So when we bear it before him and we speak it out and tell him, Lord, this is how I'm feeling, he comes to reassure us and let us know I'm with you. I may have not delivered this situation or answered this situation the way you wanted me to do it, but I'm still God, and I have a plan, and this is part of it. And this part of this plan, you're going to have to trust me, and you're going to have to walk with me through this. Not that I'm going to let you walk around it. You're going to have to walk through it with me, but I'm with you. I'm going with you through this. 
He says, little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous. And even as he is righteous, he that committeth sin is of the devil. And the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus has done that. He's already destroyed the works of the devil. We don't have to fear. We don't have to be in, in, in fear at all. Because we can rest in the promise knowing that Jesus has already destroyed the works of the devil. At verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, but his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he's born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So again, he's talking about that love. Having love for your brothers and your sisters in Christ, but also your physical brothers and sisters. You should have a love for them, a concern for them. That you pray for them and that you're there for them as much as you possibly can. Any family member that you have, that you're there, that you're available to pray for them, to talk to them, to be a light to them. He says at verse 11, for this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Love. It's so important, isn't it? To love your neighbor. Jesus said, as yourself, to love those around you. There are a lot of people right now who need and desire your love. They need and desire your help. So I want to encourage you today that you would love, that you would love God first. And if you love him first, then all that love, just as we talked about reaching out yesterday, we talked about God reached up and he reached out. We've got to reach up. To God and 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 recharge our batteries so that we can reach out to those around us do not let your situations tear you up today but instead take your situation to the one who can change you he may not change the situation but he'll change you in the process and he'll walk with you through it and he'll talk with you and he'll be a constant faithful devoted friend like you've never had before. So I really want to encourage you with that today. No matter what you're facing, no matter what obstacle you're facing, turn it to God. Let Him have your worries, your cares, your concerns. He cares for you. He's your shepherd. He is there. He is caring. And He is ready to answer your prayers if you will go and get in that secret place and say, Lord, I've had all this day that I can handle. I just need you to take over, Lord. I need you to help me to see what I need to see, to do what I need to do. And he'll be there for you, and he will not fail. God bless you. We're praying for you. Please like and share and even subscribe to this channel so that other people can be encouraged and get the word of God. I know we need as much encouragement going across um, the airwaves as we can get these days. So please be in prayer for us. Um, we're excited. We're believing God for great things for you and for our family. And we know that God is about to do some wonderful things. If my people, which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek his face turn from their wicked ways he will bring that healing to our land let's take that seriously let's take that verse to heart and allow the lord to be the shepherd of this situation that we're facing and he'll take us through together god bless you i'll see you monday